Hey, welcome back to another episode of the 180 day challenge Become an Idea Machine. I'm Florian and this is my blog LifeScienceMentor.com. Welcome, I'm happy to see you. So today's topic is 11 ways to make your work more efficient. Ways to improve your work. And most of these steps boil down to a common principle. Um, you want to be not just like somehow working on something over the day. No, you want to split up your work into small steps where you can say, I did this, this and that today for my work. And if you have small little intervals that you define before and you know exactly what to do and you know what the end product of today's step should be. Not the end product uh, one year in advance, but the end product of today's effort. If you do that, then you basically transform every day into a succession of small successes. And then that way it's much easier to start the next day. Um, because you know you knew that when you did it the day before, you were successful. And defining what you do is a very important element of that. That's what I'm explaining with most of these points today, right? So, but to start work on a good foot, we need to find the optimal time to do it. I think for most people, the best time to do work, the most productive is in the morning. That's at least the case for me. I was uh, thinking that I was a night owl, but working at night is not really is not really something that I'm very productive. If I have to do it, if I have to work at night, I'll get it done. Um, and maybe I refer to that, but w when I thought I could work in the night, especially efficiently, but if I compare that to the time when I work in the morning, much, much more efficient. And so the optimal time to work for me is actually in the morning. And for you, it actually me it actually may mean the evening is the is the best time to work. We're all different, so but figure that out. Is the morning, the afternoon, or the evening best for you? And then find out the times when you are more of have like a like a lull in productivity. That would be for me. That would be the afternoon. Um, so normally, and that's a very common schedule. I work really well in the morning. Then I get like sort of like the air gets out in the afternoon and then start picking up pace in the evening. And what I would normally do is the most important work I do in the morning. And then I run my errands for the day in the afternoon and then come back to do some more work towards the evening, some more creative and focused work, right? Like repeating errands they can be done in between or in a dedicated time when I when I'm not very productive either so then I do repeat the tasks my point is that you should define these that you have to define these periods for what works best for you and so never do any creative work when you really feel like in a mental fog that is not very productive and also don't waste your most productive time on on doing some routine work unless you absolutely must. So that would be number one. Then number two is a concept I learned from Gary Kellers and Ray Papazan's um, The One Thing. And you basically figure out the one thing that by doing it makes everything else work much better and much more efficient. And by doing that, you actually work um, one block without interruption. That block can be 20 minutes or it can be 4 hours. But the point is you really want to do the most focused, the most efficient work within that one block of time. The problem is if you interrupt your work, it's not just like 4 times half an hour with 4 times 50 minutes interruption is not just two hours plus an additional hour of interruption. It's much longer if you have interruptions in between. Why? Because 
you stop what you're working on, you were probably just getting into a momentum, right? You just wrote your text and it was just going. Then you interrupt this, you have to take a phone call or run an errand, and then you come back. But now you have to spend time to get back into your mindset, to get back into work. So every one of us has, has uh, encountered that. If you have frequent interruptions, it not, it's not just arithmetic. It's not just, it doesn't sum up the same way. Um, you, these transition times between the interruption and work, the, the transition times between work and interruption, those are the worst times, really dead times, where your mind needs to need some time to refocus. And um, that is just simply no good. Um, you get much less done. So instead, put all your work into one block, block out all distractions, and have the distractions the errands, instead of doing them in between, do them afterwards in one block each. And maybe then even your errands go faster, right? Otherwise, you know, if you do work and errands at the same time, if you do your creative work and your errands at the same time, then both like grind each other to a screeching halt. And that's not a way to be productive. And it's also not really fulfilling and satisfying. It's much better if you really are a bit exhausted after working two hours focused on something and then like let off some steam by doing your errands that would be number two number three be specific in purpose step and duration of your work so basically set deadlines if you write something like um we if you keep a daily list you probably have had items on there that was something like clean your house or um, continue the manuscript, or continue a work, or something like that. Very vague, right? And did these things get done? For me, they didn't. So, what happens if you just define clean your house as one point on your bullet list? Cleaning your house is a big, big area, right? And where do you start? Yeah, maybe... Mm, maybe, but but I I still have to buy this this extra um, detergent to scrub the table. I I'll do that tomorrow when I go shopping anyway. It's, it works better, right? And then you somehow never really get to it. Same with like work on your manuscript. It's like yeah, and then I need really, really time to sit down and do this, do that, and read about it, or do I first read about it and then write, or start writing, then read. I need some more time to think about it. Does it get done? No. So what you do, so there's energy to work, and you kind of know what you have to do. You know the end result, but you don't haven't defined your steps. So what you want to do first, you want to do, you want to define your one end goal. Cleaning your house, here's where visualization comes into, into play. Clean your house, really think about how your house might look after cleaning. It will look clean, there's no clutter around, there's maybe a little shine to it. Really imagine how a clean house looks like. Maybe next time you have a clean house, take some photos and look at them again. That's how a clean house looks like. Then you um, you define what the single steps are to get there. For one house, let's say, steps would be put all the furniture into the next room, sweep or vacuum your room, um, put the furniture back, and then wipe the counters clean. See how precisely that is defined? How easy you can get to work with that? And then you define the duration, also very important. Deadlines get stuff done. But you don't just like take deadlines as something as something you wait and then do it like one day before the before the deadline is due. No, no, no. Have deadlines in your daily work, right? In the example, clean your house. It would be how much time do you have? How much time you need? Probably an hour. Okay, now it's two o'clock. You're done by three. Isn't it great? So you know already there's a horizon. There's a there's a there's a limit. Right? One hour from now, you'll have it done. And you will exactly define what to do. And then you can follow those steps. 
the other example. Let's 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 devise it for the other example as well. Um, continue working on the manuscript. So, what is today? What will today's outcome be? Hmm, probably not the whole manuscript in one go, but you can maybe think about drafting the introduction. Okay, so in my case, manuscript always means a write-up for for a set of experiments that are used to prove a hypothesis or test a hypothesis. If you're writing a book or if you finish some legal paperwork for, for work, whatever it is, um, the steps are similar, right? But I'm just talking from my own experience. Okay, so the outcome would look like um, a draft of the introduction. One example. Okay, so what steps will I take? So first, I will list all the experiments and results I have so far. Then I will divide them, or the ones that I plan, and then I divide them into three categories. And then I search for four to five different research papers that provide background on each of these categories. Then I write five sentences about each category. Doesn't need to be very, doesn't need to be very, 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 Sophisticated, just five overview sentences about each category. And then I add one sentence each to connect these categories. And the time I would probably have to reserve are realistically two hours. So if it's nine o'clock in the morning now, I'll be done by 11. And then really be done, right? And that way you avoid also thinking too much about a chapter. You, you are now aware the outcome is not a refined end product, the outcome in this case, is a draft. So you just provide um, just provide as good a draft as you can, but you don't focus on writing elaborate, sophisticated, elegant sentences that comes later on. You just this is just to throw the information you have into one rough draft, rough outline, which will be edited a lot later on, but you first need some fundament, some substance to stand on. Right? And that's what you would do with your manuscript today. And right? you set a deadline, now a 9, and one done by 11, and then you completely focus on that. That way you will have an easier time also tell people that want to ask you for a favor. You politely um, ask them if it can wait, and you'll get to them um, after 11. Unless it's really urgent, of course, then you help them right now, but most problems are not that urgent. Right? See what I did there? You def I defined a very clear outcome, then I split that outcome up into different steps. And those were all doable steps. I know that they're doable from my own experience. And you do the same with, with any manuscript that you write or any documents that you have to work with. It will, will be different steps, will different stuff you do with your documents, but you know, if you break the work done, work down, um, similar to what I did, or analogous to the way I did it, you will be much more successful. At the evening of the day, you look back and say, gee, today I drafted the introduction to my paper. Or today I added these important references um, that, uh, I don't know, I'm just inventing here, that the judge talked to us about like in the last trial. I'll put them right in. And that's my work for today. And in the end of the day, you say, I did it. I did that step on the, on the manuscript, on the legal document. And that's how you have a successful day. Be specific in purpose, step, and duration of your work. That is number three. Number four, and this is what number three directly leads into, is adopt a momentum mindset. You want a Ludwig Sundström in his blog, Start Gaining Momentum, talked about um, a momentum mindset. You don't want to just have a day spent working towards something. That's very vague. With what I told you in step three, you have learned now to really, um, uh, to really define your projects over the day in like small closed units done in a specific amount of time. So, if you do that with as many, if not all, the things you do over the day, what do you look back then? You look back at maybe five or six different successes you had. 
you did a successful, you drafted the you successfully drafted the introduction, you successfully cleaned up the kitchen, you successfully talked to your boss about the direction of the project, you successfully got all the items you needed to go shopping for and even successfully had a talk with a friend and successfully advised him of the next step to take in his project. Success, success, success. Doesn't matter if it's for the world standard, if the world regards what you do as a success. No. You regard it as a success. You define whatever you did as a success. And that way you have success, 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 success. If you know yesterday's yesterday you successfully did 69 squats, full squats in a row, then you'll have an easier time adding one more today. Because you had a success yesterday and you didn't just also do some workout yesterday. No, you successfully finished 69 squats. So today you can do 70. You see how that works? The more successes you define, the more clearly you define your work, the, more, the easier it becomes for you to, to do. It's always define, define, define. The clearer you define the purpose, the clearer you have your vision, the better you will work towards it because you look forward to it now. The better you define the steps to take, the better you'll complete them and the better you, you define the finishing of your project as a success, the more motivated you are the next day to repeat the whole thing again. Momentumize it. Very important to improve your work. Um, then Number five is minimize and simplify steps. You know, the big goals, the big visions, the big picture is great for your overall vision. But it can be very useless for a day-to-day -day occurrence. And that sounds kind of negative. Let's, uh, let's say it in a different way. Um, the big picture is great for a goal you can aspire towards. On your day-to-day -day work, you want to you want to focus on your on this very day and what you what you can accomplish in this day. Let's say you think about you, you have a vision of your childhood dream it was to climb Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. So you have never climbed the mountain and would you just go ahead and just plan for hiking up Mount Kilimanjaro? That's a lot. You need a tour guide do you need vaccinations? How, when do I travel to Africa? Um, uh, do, how, what shoes should I wear? All these questions. It's like so huge that you have problem and trouble making a workable concept out of it, which is really key for being successful and for getting your work done in a very efficient and good way, as I just explained in point three and four. So what you do is you look at a smaller hill you could climb. You look at a smaller hill in your next uh, uh, neighborhood. Maybe there's one where you can just do a day trip. Put some, some things to eat into your car. Take some hiking shoes. Maybe buy some good hiking shoes. And then hike up that mountain. Enjoy and come back. And then once you, you've been on this small mountain, you will see, you will, you will spot more things that you didn't realize first. For example, I didn't take as much water with me, right? Okay, not a problem on a small hill. Would have been a big problem on a big hill. So you know that you have to take enough water with you. Just one example, right? Um, so that way you complete each single step every day. And then in the end, you'll be able to reach the big goal. It's basically, um, it is basically um, something I illustrated here in the teaser video as well, right? And that's also still something for the momentum mindset together. Here. This 
this is your big goal. This is the end point of your work. And here are the smaller arrows day by day. You know, the defined steps you do, the defined steps you work. Here, here, then you go up, then you go down, and then this one here even works, even moves back. Yeah, some, and then goes forward. And, you know, some steps, sometimes you are defining a topic, and sometimes you just take a step back, and you think you take a step forward, but you actually went back. And then you look back at it and realize that, but you, even that step you defined with an arrow forward, right? Even that you defined as a small success, just in the wrong direction, then you go back in the right direction towards your topic, um, and, and correct, right? Always define small steps, small successes, build up small momentum, gets towards your big goal, right? And for, and, and, um, if you can't think about um, about the steps you do, you minimize and simplify them. As I said, don't think about how to climb the Mount Kilimanjaro. Think about the small mountain in your neighborhood to climb that. Another example is uh, public speaking. So sometimes um, when I'm when I'm giving a talk about my work, um, then I sometimes just lose lose my track. Right? You sometimes. All of a sudden, your mind goes empty, and you don't you, you you don't really. It comes out of nowhere. It's just like you don't really know what to say. It can happen when you talk too much about one topic. You go on a tangent, and you go so much on a tangent that you lose your original track. So in that case, what I do then is, I imagine that I'm explaining things to my friends. Just like one or two people sitting there. And I explain this to him, to them. And then I focus back on what I'm doing right now, explaining my work. And then I get back on track in the larger goal with the public speaking. So within the public speaking, if you get some sort of, some sort of brain fog, you can still go back by really focusing on the small things. It's, uh, I think it's it's one base of um, being present. If you're if you're getting distracted while writing this, Mike Cerner, which has explained it very well in Gorilla Mindset, um, you go you realize you get distracted and then you focus again. I'm sitting here, typing on my keyboard. Words appear on the screen. That's what I'm doing. And then you get back into into being present. Basically, same with setting small steps instead of large steps. Be very present with the small steps you say. You set the small goals on your way to a large goal. Number six, very self-explanatory, really. Make sure you're healthy and fit. Eat well and healthy, work out, and get enough sleep. That's just important. If you feel kind of sickly, you will not be able to, to, to give your all to fulfill your, your, your dreams and your projects, right? Um, if you are healthy and well, you will be much more efficient when working. Number seven, make sure your workplace is conducive to your work. For most people, that means make sure that you clean up your workplace. I noticed several people in research that actually have a mess. And they work well with that. So some people need a very messy desk. Maybe they have all their projects strewn about and then they can get reminded all the time what they still have to work on. Right? Whatever it is, make sure your workplace is conducive to, your, to, to you getting your work done. Number eight, the two-minute rule. If something takes less than two minutes, do it now. Carrying down the trash takes two minutes, maybe it takes three minutes. Who cares? Carry it down. If you don't, you still remember all the day you have to get down your trash. And you, your mind always keeps thinking about that open loop. Trash, 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 trash. Of course, that is not a way to finish good work. So what you ever can do in three minutes, boom, get it done. 
Number nine. Start your work week mentally one day early. So I'm doing that. My Sunday is a Saturday. Why? Because I can... This day, Saturday is basically a cheat day for me. I can sleep long as I want. I can stay up as long as I want because the next day is Sunday. But here's the trick. Next day Sunday is my first work day. So oftentimes I don't want to get to bed too late on a Saturday. However, I have the freedom to do so. I don't need to get up early in the morning, but I can. Because it's a Sunday, I really oftentimes love to get up. Why? Because I can work on something when the whole other world is still asleep. I can work on it when everyone else is celebrating their weekend. I can get shit done, and being Sunday, I don't feel as much pressure. On Monday, everyone starts rushing back into work. And then you are kind of like, even if you work self-employed, the Monday is still like this physical mark in the week where things go back to work, right? So um, I decided to make the Sunday my first work day of the week. I wrote an article about that on this blog in the past. And that really worked very well. Sunday is the greatest start into the week ever. And on Monday, when other people are dreading another week of work, thank God it's Monday for me, but really it's actually already Tuesday for me. Right? So that's what I recommend you to do. Try it out. Start working, start working on a Sunday. Maybe take it a little bit easy, right? But um, but start start your work on a Sunday, and then see how Monday feels, and then towards the weekend, you know, enjoy the Saturday completely. I think that was number nine, and number ten is stay in touch with people. That is, you may say, something more to fulfill your emotional desires, emotional needs. Yes and no. Um, I had made the experience when there were periods where, when I was working really hard on my, really hard on my, on my, um, on my paper, and then people would tell me, friends and family would tell me. Don't work too hard. You're working too hard. And I found that demoralizing. So the solution was there not to listen too much to my family. But, you know, maybe you don't want to, like, shun out your family. The thing is, though, that nobody tells Arnold Schwarzenegger that he worked too much. He worked out too much. Nobody tells Steve Jobs and Bill Gates they work too much. Because those people have tangible success. They can show something. And then you work too much comes from, oh, we are so proud that you worked so much. You worked hard. You can be proud. And then people want to come and and bathe, bask in the sunshine of your success. If your efforts don't yield immediate success, like when you work on a manuscript, you work a lot, but the book doesn't come out immediately, right? Or... Or, um, or your paper doesn't come out. You won't have immediate, immediate millions of readers with your blog when you start out. So to avoid that your family or friends tell you you work too much, you need to be aware of one thing first. You work too much means actually, I think, something different. Based on the observation, nobody tells Arnold Schwarzenegger that he worked too much. It's basically what's communicated when people tell you you work too much is we don't see that you're having results. You work inefficient. And then you choose to work on something that doesn't yield anything of result. And you neglect us in favor of some futile work. That's what it basically says. And yeah, people are selfish. That's not always 
something that they should be condemned for, right? Everyone is a bit selfish. And and I think the only way, if you want to want to keep good contact and not get demoralized by a nagging family or, or nagging friends or whatever it is, you want to make sure that you stay in touch with people, which is also very important. You stay in touch with people, you call them once a week, just like sacrifice 10 minutes of your time to call your mother or call your friends or, or go for a coffee with your friends. It's not that hard and you stay in touch with people that's also something very nice, you know, that's something that just, it's, it happens so easily and that's also from our own experience that you absorb yourself completely in work and then you, com you, you lose sight of your other friends and you don't want to do that either, right? So keep constant contact with your friends and that makes in turn your work easy on the long run. It's more fun if you know there's some emotional support from your friends. That's so much better than having to justify yourself why you're not contacting them for a while. And I believe there's always 10 minutes time you can make in between. No excuse really. Number 11, and that's the last part, yes and. We often say yes, yes, we were happy, but, 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 we still had to go to work. Yes, the work is proceeding well, but the deadline comes closer and closer. Yes, the sun was shining, but winter is coming soon. You see how these things... Um, you see how you curb your enthusiasm there, basically? Yes, the sun is shining, but winter's coming. It's like, throw sand into your gears, right, when you started up the machine. Don't do that. This is how you talk about your work, people. This is how you, how you talk about, how you perceive your work with yourself. This is your self-talk about your work. Yes, I got the chapter done, but the paper is still... So long. There's so much still they haven't done. Not good. Then you go home and think, I didn't do anything. What, what prevails in your mind is the thought that your paper is still not done. Not that you did that one, that one chapter. No, no, your whole book is not yet done. Stop that. Say instead, yes and. Yes, the work is proceeding. And the finishing date comes closer as well. And that way, you acknowledge there's a finishing date that comes closer, but it's something that gives you energy, right? Your work is proceeding and, and yeah, and it's picking up speed, you know. The deadline comes, comes closer and closer. And the work is going well. And we're really getting into, getting into the zone here. We're really getting getting into spirit moving forward. So, that is what happens if you use yes and as a technique. It's all about your self-talk. You think it's a small detail, but it's important because it builds a fundament on which you do, on which you build everything else. If the fundamentals are bad, your work stands on weakened legs. And these, my friends, are 11 ways to become more efficient at work. I hope they help you. I hope I could inspire you. Do let me know if you have some additional ideas how to, how to make your work more efficiently. And I'll be happy to answer all comments that you give me, either on YouTube or on the blog. So far, stay tuned. I wish you a nice weekend. See you again tomorrow. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and click on click enjoy. Or the other way around. If you enjoyed this video, click on like and subscribe so that more people can see our videos and uh, we can continue the discussion. Right? As I said, I see you tomorrow. Thank you very much for listening. I'm, I very much appreciate your support and you watching my videos and reading my blog. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.